Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the British Motor Museum for the BMC and British Leyland Show. We are here, there are plenty of cars here as always with these show walk around videos, so as always, let's go and have a look at some cars. First of all at the show then, we are greeted with this Rover 75, it's no 4 Reg, lovely silver, I'm assuming connoisseur spec given the uh, chromed little mirror caps. Obviously, later model in the Rover 75 lineup, of course, the last of Rover's own built cars. This is built underneath the uh, BMW ownership, and to be fair for its age, it's actually looking really good. It's a little bit of arch rot creeping in just underneath there, but it's not anything really to worry about at the minute, it's just more surface. Next to it, we've got this Rover 800. It's a lovely shade. This is like a uh, the grey, I imagine, this is probably quite similar to the Nordic blue on the Mini Neons. Now, as I've said before on the channel, one of my friend's dads owns a Mini Neon, so I'd quite like to get a video of that at some point. Maybe uh, next time I'm visiting. We do live at opposite ends of the country at the minute. Down here you've got this lovely Rover 3500S. A very typically 70s colour. V8 as well, Ooh. loving the little headrests on this, and the uh, third brake light edition, that's cool, same lock I got on the Mini, speaking of Minis, there are obviously plenty of them here today, as much as I love them, not going to focus too much on the Minis, because we'll have seen a lot of them that are here in the uh, Mini and Metro show video that was posted not too long ago, that'll be up in the top of the screen somewhere up there I would imagine. That probably looks very odd to people who are not looking through the camera. But yes, not speaking very much about the minis, but that is a lovely colour on that one. Triumph TR7. A mini with an open sunroof, can't blame them. It's very warm in the cars today. Moving on to the next row, because that was pretty much it for that row. MG ZR. Just to clarify, that is a Rover 25 with a ZR front end. Rover 25s, obviously a slightly earlier one, and the later facelifted version, you can see the difference between them. Yeah, quite a bit of a difference. The Rover R8, as they were in pre-production, just the 200 model I believe. Rover 2000. Oh. Loving the colour on this one. That's got air conditioning as well. That's quite cool. Tudor Webasto sunroof. Of course, Webasto being an aftermarket company these days for sunroofs, you can actually get them in pretty much any car as long as it'll fit. There are companies out there that do provide a service to put those in. I haven't been looking at all, honestly. Are they rather 3500? Are these the windscreen washers? I think they are. Ooh. Those are cute. 75 Tora. Another 04, a bit like the one that we saw over there, except that was the saloon. I do like these. Manual. The correct choice of gear changing. Don't matter me automatic fans. To be fair, an automatic is useful in traffic. See the MG equivalent. See the difference? Obviously, Saloon Estate over there, but this one's got the spoiler and it's a bit more of a body kitted version. Larger alloy wheels to give the sportier look. Of course, MG branding pretty much everywhere. There's not really a huge difference between the uh, fronts on them. The only difference is that one is a facelifted 75, that one is not a facelift because it's the MG. This there, another one with red wheels or red wheel surrounds basically to stop them from curbing the alloys on it. They're quite useful, definitely worthwhile purchasing. That one's for sale, so for as always with this thing, this could be yours. Modified 
MG 180. Yeah. Yeah. ZRs, yellow little fog lights. Never won't be a win. Mm. Loving the colour on this one. 160, five door. Changes colour in the light. Oh. Yellow. Just as we're walking in, a Triumph TR6 comes through, sounding very lovely. Not sure how well the microphone's picking it up. MG ZS Saloon, obviously a bit different to its SUV counterpart now, but 1.8 litre petrol, 120 horsepower. Got an MOT until 2022, March, 25th of March. Again, this could be yours. This little one, KHT. That'll always uh, have a special place in my heart, KHT Reg, because of my mum's Fiat Panda. No idea where it is now. Representing many countries. And he's got a flyer for the Whitehall Transport Museum. Loving the green steering wheel cover and the dashboard. And the little woolly hat on the gear stick. Not sure how well you can see that. There's only so far I'm going because obviously these are people's cars. They're not just museum exhibits to be looked in. X-Type Jaguar and what looks to be a Boeing. MG with side plate. So I can assume that means there's a bit more power than standard on this one given the holes. Over on this side sort of going along as we go. MGB, MGTF supporting the uh, home side because of course tonight, today is the uh, 11th of July and tonight is the final of the Euro League. Of course England versus Italy. Rover 200 next to a couple of 75s. Also I quite like the face on these really late ones. Notice how they exaggerated the uh, number plates around a bit more on these ones. Bit of clouding on the headlights, but nothing too major for a car of that era and age. It's also got little uh, windscreen washer jets, but for the lights. Love that. MG ZR next to a TF. TFs are cool little cars, actually. I like them a lot. If I was having a little uh, coupe roadster type thing, I'd definitely uh, consider one of those especially quite highly. This car here is being uh, resurrected from its bodged and boy racery state because of course a lot of these MGs of the era were uh, taken to their local orange branded car shop and uh, yeah made to look a bit boy racerish, a bit fast and furious but then again that was the style of the time, sex spec cars they were called, familiar to those you know, the term at least, familiar to those who watch Mighty Car Mods. This one is being taken back to original form. Looks nice, I like it. I do like the rally flaps, I hope they're staying. Ooh, that's a lovely little TR3. Another 75, another 75. A Rover 600, now Mr. Coleman, the rubbish mechanic. He had one of these last year at this show. I think he sold it since. Never really got to have a walk around of that, but Never mind. Either way, looks good. Over there, Rover SD1. We'll come on to those in a bit. There's a couple more around the corner. More MGs. Oh, streetwise. I can improvise. If you know what I'm referencing with that, give yourself a shiny. In a way, it's quite similar to the Dacia Sandero stepway when you think about it, really. It's the same sort of thing. SUV looks on a hatchback body, essentially. It does look cool, I quite like them. I like them a lot. A later 2012 Reg Mini. Not obviously built by BMC or BL. MGs that are, love the colour. Again, more England flags on this side. ZS and a TF. There's the SD1s. A Leyland built Volvo from 2000, sorry, not 2008, no, late 90s. I'm joking, it's not. Obviously, Triumph Vitesse next to some MGBs. That one being the plastic or rubber bumper front, so later version to that. 
I've said before on this channel, they were raised up and had these because of trying to market them in the United States. So they were detuned, ride height was raised, slightly different look compared to it. You don't usually get to see a direct comparison between them, but here provides a good opportunity to do so. Lovely Morris Minor pickup. Oh, so much red on this. I'm imagining this has been resprayed, but it does look good. Tram 2500 injection next to a stag. This little mini here, we saw this last month at the Mini and Metro show. If I remember rightly, I likened it to the old ice cream van style because of its twin colours. It's nice. I like it. Not as much as Millie, but that's because of my choice, you know? My car. <laughs> And down here we have Mini Avenue basically, two Cooper Sports over there, Mini Equinox, Mini Mark 3 1000, Morris Cooper and Surf Blue, the best colour for a Mini. This is different, little Morris van called Tipsy I can assume, Morris Half Ton Suntour Camper Van. Ooh. It's very cosy in there to say the least. This is the uh, Elf and Hornets stand. That one's been to Portugal. I do like the Elf and Hornets. They're a bit controversial well, amongst mini fans. Just because of the looks, they're a little bit different, but I like them. A little Innocenti. So of course Innocenti being uh, British Leyland's Italian division. We've seen this at Retro Rise before, this little one. I think that was actually my car of the show at that event. You can see why though, it's absolutely gorgeous, I love it. I kind of want it. But yeah, we got three Innocentis in a row. We got this little one, I'm not actually sure what this one is. I, if I had to guess, I'd say it's based off of a MG Midget. But it's the Innocenti 950. Notice how the little Innocenti badge is snuck in there. That's lovely. Left hand drive, so I can only assume this is imported. Tiny little gear stick, radio. Obviously the Innocenti 120L, Dizzy Nilbertoni. And Innocenti Mini Cooper 1300. This I think we saw possibly a Bewley. This Mini is representing the Birmingham Mini Owners Club. I'm not going to try and do a Brummie accent on this. No, that will probably turn a lot of people off from this content. Been to IMM 20... Or can I get that right? IMM 2007. It's been a long day already. This one, little Rally Mini. Little Rally Mirrors. Very lightweight, I would imagine. Little extended steering rack. That's cool. Obviously... A little roll cage. Minis variously. There's a lot of them. I say I'm not ignoring the minis, but we've seen a lot of these cars here last month. We are on to probably the best row of the show, because I'm totally not biased, and you'll see why in a minute. Rev 75, again, probably connoisseur spec. A Leyland Mini, or at least it's advertised as a Leyland Mini. Bit like mine at the minute, Leyland Badge. Lovely, part of the British Mini Club, excellent. Hello fellow member, I'm also part of that. Rover 75, 75, 75. Plenty of 75s here, 25. More 75s, MGBs and GT variants. That one's a V8, not starting very well. This is DPN's Car Collective on uh, on Instagram, Deep End Car Collective even, got to get it right. He follows me on Instagram, owns this lovely Rover 75, having the rocker cover on this, very nicely painted, fuel injection, struts, it's a business this, if you don't already follow him on uh, Instagram, a very nice collection. Over here of course, 
Joseph Lloyd's Rover 45 V6. We've seen this plenty of times on the channel. Of course, he's advertising his merchandise here. Logo designed by me. Not trying to take a credit or anything. Ha ha. But yes, if you want a t-shirt like that, contact him. I'm sure uh, I'm sure he'll have those in stock, or at least he can get more in stock. Anyway, the best car of the show, obviously. Millie just here wearing a different badge for this event, because of course this is the BMC and Leyland show. She's got a Leyland badge. We've got the original badge just there, so... For those who are purists, obviously it's not a Leyland Mini. Just down the side here we have... 30 graphics which have been added. You may have seen these in the background of some videos. This is because Millie actually yesterday was 30 years old. Yes, the 10th of July 1991, Millie was registered. So, 30 years of Millie. Happy birthday, Millie, for yesterday. And of course, we've got a little balloon that's flapping around in the breeze quite violently to celebrate. Next to this car, we've got a Rover 800 Coupe, which may be familiar to many of you if you follow the Maverick Motors YouTube channel. This is Clifford, the big red Rover. And Clifford looks very nice indeed. I do love the little Austin Rover seat cover. That's quite fun. I do like the Rover 800, actually. My mum and dad used to have... Uh, brief facelift version which is what this one was or is and the post facelift version just uh just when they got married so very nice cars they always said to me how big of a car it is and it's much bigger than the uh, Renault we got and they're right because it is absolutely huge next to it we've got the MGB Molly the MGB this GT this is it says on there again another very nice example of an MGB Loving the sunroof on it. Another car my dad used to have, he used to have an MGB GT, except his was blue. Not too dissimilar, actually, to the colour of this TR6. Blow. This TR6, very nice. I do actually really like the tonneau covers for the interior. That's cool, and the fuel cap in the middle. Next to it, we've got uh, Tom, the guy who organised this little meet and group that we're in. Uh, he's brought his MGTF down. Again, another car I really like. There's a lot of cars here I really like. But yeah, it's a fine example of a TF. Hopefully might be having a little bit of a play around this later on. Not a review, but uh, might have a little play around in it. We'll see. See how time goes. As always with these things, I'm usually quite limited. Next up, we've got Will's MGZR. Driven all the way down from Scotland. This has come from Ayrshire, I believe. It's only come down a long way. We've also got Lewis Macklin on Macklin's Motors. He's come down from Aberdeen. So he's come down in Morris the MG3, which is currently not occupying this spot, so I think he's out and about driving. That's all right. Anyway, whilst he's gone, I'm sure we'll see him later on. In fact, I think that's probably him over there in that car park for some reason. No idea why. But over here we have a bit of a consortium of Rover SD1s. So we've got various Vitesse versions. I don't think I've ever seen so many SD1s in one place before. Can't say I'm hating it, so I really like it. I like the SD1. It's a very cool looking car. Of course, the Ferrari Daytona was styled after this car. Just for note, it wasn't. This was designed and styled after the Ferrari Daytona. But I do like this rather large ducktail spoiler. On to the next row, past YouTubers row, we have got this lovely Jaguar XK with people sat inside it. Does look nice. Jaguar X-Type, sovereign spec. 2.2 litre diesel. Triumph Dolomite Sprint. Now this looks lovely. This one, as it would appear, has come all the way down from Scotland. Nobody's perfect, but if you're from Glasgow, you're pretty damn close. Well, as someone who was born just down the road from Glasgow in Paisley, I can agree. It's a lovely colour though, it's not actually too dissimilar to Millie. Just been speaking with this chap who owns this lovely Triumph Dolomite Sprint, very nice car. 
a braided alloy radiator and I can't recommend that sort of thing enough. The queue getting in here was probably about an hour long, something like that. Took us about an hour to get in. Many cars overheated, by many I mean about five, but in terms of classic cars, it's still quite a lot in a short space of, uh, yeah, short space of road, basically. So here is some footage of that now. Rovers, as far as the eye can see, all BMC and Leyland. May as well take the opportunity. Just having a look around this lovely little MGF 51 Reg. Do like the styling on these actually. Of course, the TF replaced these, slightly different front end. Yeah, lovely cars. Triumph Vitesse, very nice looking vehicle. A Stag, uh, I think it's a 2000. Not too, uh, not too strong on my Triumphs. I know the Dolomite Sprints and TR range of cars, such as those ones over there. We'll have a look at those in a minute. Triumph 2000, this one with overdrive apparently. And this guy's trying to take a picture. <laughs> Rover 25. Lovely Morgan. This here is a Bristol 2 litre. Bristol, of course, very unique styling. A bit different from everything else, to say the least. Handbrake off, wise choice, otherwise the uh, drums will stick. That must be the fuel cap location in there. Third little brake flight. Another Triumph here. Lovely little car. MG, this was following me in actually, I think, for quite a while until we all got split up in the traffic. Little yellow spotlights, never, <laughs> never not love those. Another Dolomite. Or Austin A35, I want to say. An Austin with quite a large puddle of something underneath it, probably coolant, I imagine. Hope they're able to get home okay. Drive GT6, of course you've got those cars there. Can't forget those ones, the Lostins. I say little, they're actually quite large. Goodbye Rover, three and a half litre V8. And Morris Minor. My little MG midget in the best colour here, orange of course. Triumph TR5 next to a TR6 and a TR3 with the engine running, it's quite loud. TR2, not sure what this one is. From the front, I kind of think it looks a bit like a Mercedes. It's not a Mercedes. Peerless Cars from Slough. Okay, never heard of Peerless Cars. Do you like the uh, rear fins though? Down in the style of a classic sort of Le Mans car, I would guess, judging by that graphic. Must be a kit car of some sort, based upon, I think it's a Triumph MG. They had that inside the, uh, the cab. It seems to pass up with the other Triumph TRs. I'd assume it's a TR kit car. If it isn't, please let me know in the comments, because I generally don't know. TR7s, variously. TR8s. Sorry, these might actually be TR8s, not TR7s. Maybe TR3. That is a TR7 though, with a V8, Ooh. a TR6, and another TR5. Triumph GT6 Mark III, lovely colour on that. Steel wheels, not a choice you usually see on these cars, but either way, they actually look really good on this one. It's down there, Stag, TR5, next to a TR6, another TR5. Sorry, I say that was a TR5, TR3. It's been a long day already. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon at this point. That is a TR5 and there's another one. We'll cut through here and have a look at these cars. Triumph TR7 in purple. I'm not sure if this is an original colour. I hope it is. It's unique, it's different. Paint's not in the best condition on this one, but again with these shows, I'd rather see people bring the cars in not the best condition. So they actually show them. I like seeing cars like this at this show. 
a stag with a hardtop roof, not something you see every day. TR7, another 2000, this one's got fuel injection, this one's for sale. This could be yours, as always. £6,000, it's not too bad a price, I don't think, for that sort of thing. TR2, next to a purple TR6, and a very loud flag. We're kind of at the end of the tarmac section of Triumph Alley, but we've got this nice stag here with rear brake light, third brake light. You can actually see the hole where the hard top would go into. I do like the T-bars on these. Something different, at least. TR7. It's quite a difference, isn't there, in style between the TR7 and the TR6. Of course, that one followed on, but how many years after, I'm not 100% sure. Now, because I was gushing too much over my own car and the 45 V6 and the uh, 800 MGB and all that other stuff, we completely missed out the Land Rover Defenders just here. Of course, we've got a 1991 Reg uh, Defender. This will be a 90 model, obviously same age roughly as my Mini. We does share a couple of parts, actually. You have a look at that. That's very familiar, isn't it? You have a look, this has got the LED headlamp on it, which is an aftermarket upgrade. Something different. Again, these things are sort of a bit controversial between fans of classic or older vehicles because it's not to everyone's taste. Personally, I quite like them on this, it really suits this. I'm not a huge fan of them on the Mini particularly, but each to their own. None of the white steel rims, that's rims? Wheels, not rims. Oh, well, they are rims, I suppose. Altoba. Looks good. This one over here, another 90. Ducati Performance. Hmm. I mean, you might tow Ducatis, but. Yes. I like it in this colour. Black with the uh, little aluminium style grate on it. Yeah, it's quite good. Between them, they look really nice. Also, little, I think to be Rover Metro just down there. At least it looks like it. Obviously, hub nut fan. Rear suspension looks a little bit low, it has to be said. This seems to be the Morris Minor section of the show. It's got a lovely Traveller 1000 just there, next to that one with Gru in the back. Makes a difference from seeing the Minions in the back of it. I like the little custom, or at least what I assume to be a custom parcel shelf in this. This one looks to be a hearse actually, just coming back to it. Yeah, this one's a hearse, Morris Minor and Volkswagen Funerals. That's something unique. Another Traveller. This one very much celebrating patriotic pride. Very cool. Flat paint on that one. I'm loving the wheels on that little one, STU. Yeah, they look really good. <laughs> and the tow ball cover on that. Thanks, Thank you. Like Elmo, the uh, Morris Minor convertible here. Elmo looks really good. Again, love the wheels on this. There's some fine cars here with good decisions on the wheels. Those wheels are not necessarily my thing, but again, each their own. That's what shows like this are about. They bring you variety. This is a bit more of a hot rodded looking mini. Bit, so you can have a beer and then drive it. Yeah. And Chris comes over anyway. That might be, there you go. Green. Not sure what the green's from. It looks familiar. I don't think what it is from. Hello. <laughs> They've got guard children in the back, as opposed to a guard dog. Over here, this is something different. Morris Minor 1000 with a Morris Minor trailer. Might actually be a camper. It looks like a camper star, actually. Again, something different. It's got a solar panel on the roof, one of these flexible ones. Yeah. 
No, living the dream. Classic Morris Minor with a classic camera in the back. Conversion, a Wolseley, another Wolseley, a Hornet, Mark III, Wolseley 1500, and of course all the electric ones, which are obviously not electric. They're just piled up here. Of course, the public car park is quite different to the exhibitor's car park. A couple more Morris's and Rovers. That one's got a picnic camper on the back. Morris Oxford. You may pass me, but will you outlast me? I think that speaks a lot for a lot of old cars, to be perfectly honest. There we go. It's only got a unique look to the front of them. As we've had a look around a lot of Triumph TR vehicles lately, especially at this show, here's just a quick pan of the TRs at the TR register here at the museum at the show today. What a great display. As you can see down here, we are in the now main grounds of the museum, but there's still plenty more to see. And around here, we've got an MGTF next to an F. See the difference between them? This one, of course, orange, the best color, undisputed. I think this is actually quite, yeah, I was gonna say, it's a late one, this one, because it's uh, so different from the rest. It's an LE500. I think these are around 2006, 2007, 8-ish, something to that extent. Of course, MG being owned by the Chinese company SAIC at that point, they continue the TF for a couple more years. It's cool. Over here we've got the BRM Rover stand. Of course, rather distinctive with their orange grill surrounds. You got these three all in the line as well. Plenty of cars with little oil puddles underneath, or coolant puddles. Mine is included in that, it's dripping a little bit of oil at the minute. Mini Cooper Sport, number 52 of 500, that one. At least that's what it says on the side. It's made a point of making it stand out that way. LOE, I believe these were the press vehicles for the Cooper Sports at the time. We've got all of these. LOE. In fact, V203 LOE. That is this very car just here. That's with the traders just here. Luckily, in that space, we haven't got anything on that side to focus on. It's got another Rover 800. You'll see this one with a little mirror so you can see underneath and look how clean that is. That's amazing. In fact, this whole thing is clean. I can imagine it's not a daily drive anymore. Electric scooter, I need one of those. Rover V8, I can only assume this one is imported from California. Eh? Yes, California. If it is, that'll explain the immaculate paint on it. Of course, the Rover Coupes, known as the Tomcat in uh, pre production. Of course, they're all given these names. Again, of course. Furious driving viewers will be familiar with the Tomcat, of course he has one. Love the little pop-up roof on these. That's rather cool. Would love to actually uh, have a go in one of these at some point. Maybe when I'm 25, who knows. Here's another one, earlier look. Those of course later ones with the uh, later Rover front grille. This one's much more smooth front end. This one looks to have been done in the style of the Volkswagen Harlequin, or Harlequin cars. As you can see, a different colour panel for every part of the car. So you've got blue, gold would be in the main colour of this car, black door, green wing, less green front, or brighter green front, and red. Awesome, love it. 
couple of, I think, is that a GTI? Might be, we're going to have to go and investigate now. Yes it is, it is a GTI. STI, massive exhaust. ST1 Vitesse, oh, big powerful beast this is. Thought he was real for a minute there. Police Rover 800. Again, not can I see very many of these days. Looks cool though. A couple of little Rileys over here. Might have been that one following in actually. Not sure, there's a lot of them. Yeah, obviously all the same car underneath, just with a different face. The very essence of badge engineering. There's many car companies these days that do that sort of thing, so uh, it's not unique. Over here, lovely MG. It's a very chilled out place, this. I like it. Austin and Wolseley vehicles. That's an Austin Westminster. It's Morris Oxford. These are all the same car, again, just with a different badge on them. Obviously, smart, uh, slight changes between them. Not many. Down here we have got all these lovely looking Rovers and MGs. But we've also got the Austin Maxis. Of course the Maxi. Very proud of the fact you could fold literally all the seats down and turn it into a bed. Saving you money on camping because you wouldn't have to buy a tent. The Austin Metro j -Reg van. A little bit younger than my Mini. Didn't they produce that Metro for so long, but evidently they did. It wants to be a Mark III, I want to say. It's cool. Austin <laughs> Princess, with slightly uh, tilted suspension, to say the least. That's what I like about this show, there's just so much variety here. As much as I love coming to the mini shows, there's only so much you can say about there's a mini, there's a mini, there's a mini. Sure, they're all different. They've all got their own personal touches to them, which make them unique. But down here you've got just so much more variety. I thought I recognised this Rover 216S. That's because it's featured quite prominently in 2020 on social media, especially sites such as Twitter. Because I think, if I remember rightly, the story goes, this was traded in as a high mileage example to a Mazda dealership in Derbyshire. Or Suzuki. It might be both. It might be a Mazda Suzuki dealership. Of course, as we know, many of these companies share. But yes, this was traded in as a high mileage example for a brand new car. And the dealer there thought, this is way too precious to scrap because as with these trade-ins usually go, they end up being scrapped, especially for older vehicles. But it's deemed to be too precious and money was raised by the 200 and 400 club. And it's eventually bought between, I think it's just, it was quite a few members. I can't remember the exact amount at the top of my head. It was bought by a few members and it's now officially owned by the, uh, by the club. 402,000 miles. So you can see it's kind of white was traded in, but it's still in really good condition. A Mini Cooper with a signature from Paddy Hopkirk. Something different. Of course, the rally ace that took the Mini to victory in the 1964 Monte Carlo Rally. That's something different. That's the sound of Britain in the 70s. There goes an immaculate MG.
Just next to us there, we've got a couple of Rileys. Very different style on these ones, especially with the way that sort of shapes like a heart. Isn't that nice? Lovely Riley with rather well, contrasting colours. 1932 Riley 9, this one. Red chassis, green body. These are nice. Just coming down now then. Trying for claim, of course, BL's first sort of merger with Honda to make vehicles. Marina. And another Marina. This one being the coupe, I think. Right. Plenty of cars over here. Rover Metro, nice Marina, Rover 75, Jaguar, some drives, variously. Mini, love the Mini, as we know. This one, I think, earlier city, at least it looks to be of that spec. It's not advertising it particularly, but Mini City. Morris Oxford. The Rover 213. Oh, well, there's so much to see over here. Oh. A yellow. <laughs> Another reclaim. As nice as it is that I can talk and tell you all about these different cars, sometimes it's just nice just to see them, to take it all in. Loving the livery on that one. No, it's really cool, in my mind. A uh, little rally land crab over here. Looks cool. Four spotlights. Union Jack on the wing. It's cool. Ford Capri. Little rally thing. More land crab action. Minis. Of course, there's minis. Everybody loves a mini. I know I love a mini. MGB GT, Austin 1800, Austin, Austin, Morris, same car underneath, just slightly different styling tweaks, Morris 2 200, Morris Marina, 1800, a Wolseley, standard. Little standard. And the plenty of Austin's. That was an ambulance. That's something different and cool. Let's have a quick look around it, shall we? Oh, there's even a person in the back in this one. Hopefully they're okay. A Vanguard. Looks to be the same colour actually as the standard. Well, standard next to it anyway. It is a standard Vanguard on it, but uh, it's not the point. <laughs> this one's a little pickup. I do like my commercial vehicles, as you know. At least frequent viewers will know. Morris Marina Estate, I'd assume. Rather than being any specific conversions, like a camper van or something. And guard. Have a look over there in a moment. More triumphs. Plenty of triumphs here today. We're now over at the Morris Marina stand because, of course, they're celebrating their 50th birthday this year. Here they are all in their various colours. And guys, that one, of course, celebrating the game tonight. Firstly, I'm not a huge football fan, but uh, got to support the home side, you know. Johnny Grosser lands in 24-hour challenge. 
It's impressive. We're obviously doing that to celebrate the uh, 50th year of the marina. And why not? You've got to do something to celebrate. And of course, with everyone still social distancing and all that, a run is a good idea. Here's another one, a super estate. Green. Or is it yellow? Green. It's green, I'm told. <laughs> Marina Coupe 1.3, like a little Union Jack flag on the back. Very similar to the one I put on Joseph's 45 last year. He bought it. Ooh, a marina pickup with wooden sides. Oh, fire truck's off. Marina TC, Marina Leopard Skin, Marina. There's plenty of marinas down here, that's for sure. It's all kicking off over there. That's a bit of an argument by the sounds of it. Is that a Morris Atal? It is. With a Atal, this is a pickup version. Marina. Marina. It's a lot of marinas. Marina. GT. And it's got a nice tow ball cover, just like mine. Orange, best colour. Another Italian, this one's an estate. The doll might sprint. What's that doing over here? That's not a Morris Marina. A little ignition coil, engine. Ooh, look at all this, looks nice. Morris Marina. I think this is a Morris, I'm not sure. It's a pickup though, either way. <laughs> It's got a little roll cage in it. A few runs of the paint, but then again, I'm no one to judge. My painting's awful. This is cool. A Royal Mail van. That's something different. You don't see these every day. Of course, in the UK, for my foreign viewers, we have postmen. And they all come around in little vans and deliver our letters through our door. And they usually have a black and white cat as well. Because we all live back in the 70s. We all speak like this, what what? Morris Marina. There's plenty of them. We're in the Morris Marina stand. So look at the variety of them though. This actually looks quite good on those wheels and that colour. Obviously in the towel. But it looks really cool. I like it. Whoever owns this, good job. Just up on the hill, Austin Maestro and a Triumph Acclaim. And just over there is the public car park for anyone wondering. MGB, looking very nice. A little roadster. Do love the interiors on these. I love the badge as well. The badge is awesome. If I remember rightly, this is a early TF. Does it say on the back? Look at all the teddy bears, they're off for their journey. No, it doesn't say, but I think it's an early TF. Cool, and there's a later TF. Another Triumph, there's plenty of them here today. The Dolomite, that's cool, little convertible. Another TR5 just down here. Montego Estate. Don't see many of these anymore. It used to be everywhere, especially when I was growing up as a child. Not so much now. Maestro's at the back. A Maestro van. Ooh. Fluffy dice in the uh, the cab. Why not? The Maestro MG Maestro. That one, pretty quick. That sounds pretty good. A Roda car. Another Montego estate. Rover 800s again. And Allegro. The Allegros are different. They've sometimes got little square steering wheels. Rover Metros. These two are definitely at the Mini Metro show. 
Not sure about that one. 10% battery remaining. Let's hope we get through all this. Much quickly run through the rest. We don't have much battery left. Plenty of cars here, aren't there? So at least. We have 100. Hundreds. Triumph Stag. A Spitfire. I think that's the first one I've seen here today. Really not sure what this one is. Equip GT. Must be a Triumph of some sort, but certainly very different. Triumph TR7. Obviously a load of Metros and 100s just down there. Another TR7. TR8s. Doesn't look that different from a TR7. Really. Don't actually know what the differences are between them, other than the number of one being seven, the other being eight. Little pedal car. This is quite cool. Awesome. TR7 Sprint. GT6. Well, I've seen only one Spitfire here today. Obviously, they've got the same front ends as the Spitfire, the GT6s. An Allegro Estate. And right, we're at the Range Rover part. Just over here, then we've got Range Rover P38. That would be the very first style of Range Rover. I'm not sure if that's the very first one, but the very first style of them, because it's only three door. Or two door? Three door it would be, as it goes into the cab. There they grow, plenty of them. Trying to get run over by this Allegro. Nope. There's some more Range Rovers up there. As well as the BMC and Laban Show, well, exhibits. All these cars basically. Hey, that Rover 100's got a little trailer. Awesome. You've also got some vehicles from the emergency services, such as got that ambulance just up there. This fire fire truck. Some more Allegros. Austin Citron Green. Metro Ambulance. Being towed on the back of this camper. Why not? It's awesome. An American, well, I say American, it's a Kawasaki. But it's an American Trooper style bike. Range Rover police vehicle and a Mercedes Carmichael fire truck. Cornwall Fire Service. Hmm. Well, that is not part of the emergency services exhibit. Uh, that is just an ambulance in case anybody has any illnesses whilst they're here. Nothing to round off this show because we've looked at everything else. This Morris fire truck, which of course does rather fit in with the theme. This vehicle was restored by BW Mail and Sons Limited from Daventry. It's a 1965 Morris FS fire engine. Hmm. Hold on, did I just read that right? CJL 999C, there we go, engine 999. Can't ask for anything more perfect than that, can you really? Of course, 999 in the UK It's the emergency number. We have a quick look in the back. Ooh. Plenty of space to keep the equipment. As you can see, the car park is now pretty barren. Of course, there's the typical AA van just over there helping someone out because old cars, it's the, uh, it's the lifestyle, basically. But yes, anyway, I think empty car park. That's going to wrap up our little walk around of the BMC and Leyland Show 2021. So if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like. Comment down below, let me know what was your favourite car here. And of course, if you want to see more car-based content, don't forget to subscribe, because there's plenty more of it coming up on the channel very soon. So, that's all from me for now. So, until the very next video, I shall say, farewell.